The Battle of Nasiriya was fought between the U.S. 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade and Iraqi forces from 23 March to 2 April 2003 during the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. Nasiriya is a city which lies along the banks of the Euphrates River in Dhiqar province, about 225 miles southeast of Baghdad. Its population is made up almost entirely of Shiite Muslims. On the night of 24-25 March, the bulk of the Marines of Regimental Combat Team 1 passed through the city over the bridges and attacked north towards Baghdad. However fighting continued in the city until 1 April when Iraqi resistance in the city was defeated. The battle, prelude on the morning of 23 March, a U.S. Army supply convoy from the 507th Maintenance Company had mistakenly veered off Highway 8 and then turned toward the city into enemy-held territory. The U.S. vehicles ran into an ambush, drawing enemy fire from every direction. Eleven American soldiers were killed and several were taken prisoner. However, a few soldiers held off the enemy attack for almost an hour. At that time a company from the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade under the command of Major William Peoples rapidly came to assist the ambush U.S. Army soldiers. The original plan was for Task Force Tarawa to take and hold the two bridges inside Nasiriya, creating a corridor for the RCT-1 and 6th Engineer Support Battalion from Battle Creek, Me to pass north through the city along Route 7. Nasiriya was the headquarters of the Iraqi Army's 3D Corps, composed of the 11th ID, 51st Mech ID and 6th Armored Division, all at around 50% strength. The 51st operated south covering the oil fields, and the 6th was north near Al Amara, which left three brigade-sized elements of the 11th ID to guard the Anasariya area. U.S. Army convoy ambushed at around 0600 on the morning of 23 March. An 18-vehicle convoy of 31 soldiers of the United States Army's 507th Maintenance Company and two soldiers of the 3rd Forward Support Battalion of the 3rd Infantry Division missed a turn onto Highway 8 and mistakenly continued along Highway 7 into the city. The convoy was led by Captain Troy King, a supply officer with no training as a combat officer. Iraqi technical vehicles began shadowing the convoy as it passed an Iraqi checkpoint near the Euphrates River. After passing the Al-Quds headquarters on the northern outskirts of the city, King realized that he was lost and the convoy began turning around to retrace its steps through the city. At around 0700 the convoy began taking small arms, RPG, mortar fire, and fire from Iraqi tanks, and in the resulting ambush 11 soldiers were killed and a number of soldiers, including Specialist Shoshana Johnson and Private Jessica Lynch became prisoners of war. At least 15 of the 18 American transport vehicles in the convoy, ranging from Humvees to heavy expanded mobility tactical trucks, were destroyed by small arms fire, RPGs, mortar rounds, and tank gunfire. Some of them swerved out of the road or crashed while attempting to avoid incoming Iraqi fire. One truck was crushed by the traversing gun barrel of a Type 69 QM tank. With the help of two R-1 Cobra attack helicopters, Peoples and his men rescued 10 soldiers of the 507th that were pinned down by heavy fire, including four who were wounded. However, 11 had already been killed. Others were captured, including Private First Class Jessica D. Lynch, Specialist Shoshana Johnson and Private First Class Laurie P. S. Dower. Having rescued the soldiers, the Marines of 2nd Battalion, 8th Marines, attacked Nasariya from the south, using amphibious assault vehicles and Cobra gunships. The remaining able-bodied troops formed a screen around their wounded and fought off further Iraqi attacks. At 7.30, King's three surviving vehicles made contact with the tanks of Major Bill Peoples Alpha Company, 8th Tank Battalion on Highway 7. 
about 10 kilometers south of Nasiriah. One of People's tankers noticed American vehicles in the road ahead. People's ordered his tanks forward to rescue as many soldiers as possible. They rolled up on 10 beleaguered soldiers from the five disabled vehicles of the second element of the convoy which had also managed to escape the ambush and set up a defensive perimeter about 5 kilometers south of the city. In heavy fighting, several Iraqi platoon-size units two ZSU-23-4, Shilka, anti-aircraft weapons and several mortar and artillery positions were destroyed by a combined force of M1 Abrams tanks, Cobra helicopter gunships and the artillery of 1st Battalion, 10th Marines. Ambush Ali The bloodiest day of the operations for the Marines was also the 23rd of March when 18 men of Charlie Company, 1st Battalion, 2nd Marines, were killed and eight amphibious assault vehicles disabled in heavy fighting with Iraqi forces around the Saddam Canal. The Marines were engaged by RPGs, mortar and artillery fire, as well as four Iraqi tanks hidden behind a building. A friendly fire incident occurred when two A-10s from the Pennsylvania Air National Guard strafed the amphibious assault vehicles of Charlie Company, by mistake killing at least one Marine. An article in Salon magazine put the friendly fire death toll at 10. The A-10 strike was cleared by the battalion's forward air controller, who was with Bravo Company, bogged down on the eastern outskirts of the city and did not have contact with Charlie Company and was unaware that Marines were so far north. Two other Marines from the 6th Engineer Support Battalion Corporal Evans James and Sergeant Bradley S. Cordors drowned while trying to cross the Saddam Canal under fire the following day. RCT-1 pushes through Ambush Alley. The advance of Regimental Combat Team 1 through Nasiriah was delayed by fighting there. On the evening of 24 March, Lavs of the 2nd Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion pushed north of the Saddam Canal, leading RCT-1 through Ambush Alley. With Apache Company in the lead, 2nd LAR attacked north on Highway 7, coming under fire from a heavily defended compound north of the city. Two anti-aircraft guns protected the approach to the compound. After coming under fire from LAV's M1A1 tanks, Cobra gunships and artillery, Iraqi resistance subsided. That evening Marine 2nd La BN 81mm mortar crews took position and eliminated known sniper positions which previously had U.S. Army elements pinned down throughout the city. At dusk, 2nd La established a perimeter 15 kilometers north of Nasiriah. However, a huge sandstorm rolled in, cutting off communication with main elements to the south in Nasiriah. As 2nd La set up a defensive perimeter for the evening, Iraqi reinforcements were mobilized and sent south to Nasiriah from Kut. Unaware of 2nd La's defensive position, when the Iraqi force ran into 2nd La they surrounded him from every direction, taking positions among the surrounding hillside. Using a combination of overwhelming direct firepower by a platoon of M1A1 tanks, battalion LAV 25s, LAV 80s, and LAV AD vehicles, the battalion engaged the Iraqi forces. Simultaneously, 81mm mortar crews eliminated Iraqi positions throughout the hillside by indirect fire as well as a strategic ammunition supply point used by Iraqi forces during the first half of the attack. The last Iraqi attack was beaten off just after dawn and a large number of Iraqi prisoners taken afterwards. The battalion estimated that around 300 Iraqi soldiers were killed along with an unknown number of civilians who were loaded by force onto buses, while Iraqi troops occupied the rear sections in the hope of breaking the Marines' defensive position. There were no U.S. casualties. The battle would later be called the Battle of the Coil, and was, at that time, thought to be the longest sustained battle by U.S. Marines since the Vietnam War. Meanwhile, the 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines held open ambush alley as the rest of RCT-1 passed through Nasiriah on the night of 24-25 March. 
partly as a result of RCT-1's delay. Colonel Joe Dowdy was later relieved of command of RCT-1. Aftermath by 27 March most Iraqi resistance in the city had been subdued and the focus of the battle shifted from full combat to cordon and search operations. Small groups of Fedayeen Saddam militia were hiding throughout the city and launched attacks on marine patrols with small arms and RPGs. These attacks were uncoordinated and the resulting firefights were lopsided, with large numbers of militiamen killed. During the morning of 27 March, two recon marines found a sunken M1 tank at the bottom of the river. The tank had been missing since the night of 24-25 March. Navy CB divers from Underwater Construction Team 2, part of Task Force Mike spent two days retrieving the flooded tank and the four Marines from the 1st Tank Battalion who were found inside. According to a captain in the Republican Guard, morale amongst Republican Guard units was bolstered by the resistance offered by the regular Army's 45th Brigade in the city. Iraqi casualties were 359 to 431 dead. More than 300 were wounded and 1,000 captured. U.S. losses were 32 dead, 60 wounded, and 6 captured. Private First Class Lynch initial reporting of the battle emphasized the supposed heroism of Private First Class Jessica Lynch. On 3 April, the Washington Post ran a front-page story which read, Lynch, a 19-year-old supply clerk, continued firing at the Iraqis even after she sustained multiple gunshot wounds and watched several other soldiers in her unit die around her. The Post quoted an unnamed official who said, She was fighting to the death, she did not want to be taken alive. This description soon came under question. On 4 April, the Associated Press ran a story which stated that Lynch's father had heard from the doctors at attending her, who said that she had not been shot or stabbed during her ordeal. The 15th of April, the Post ran a story questioning the accuracy of its own accounts from the 3rd of April, saying, Lynch's story is far more complex and different than those initial reports. She was neither shot nor stabbed. On the 24th of April, Private Lynch testified before Congress. She called the earlier report sir, lie, and said that she had in fact never fired her weapon, because she was knocked unconscious when her vehicle crashed. Participating Units U.S. Military and U.K. Support Regimental Combat Team 2 2nd Assault Amphibian Battalion 2nd Marine Division 1st Battalion 2nd Marines 3rd Battalion 2nd Marines 2nd Battalion 8th Marines 1st Battalion 10th Marines Alpha Company 2D Reconnaissance Battalion Alpha Company 8th Communication Battalion 2nd Radio Battalion Combat Service Support Battalion 22 2nd FSS G8 Tank Battalion Charlie Company, 2nd Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion, Regimental Combat Team 1, Alpha Co 1st Tank BN 1st Marine Division 2nd Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion, 2nd Marine Division 3rd Battalion, 1st Marines 11th Marines. 2nd Battalion 23rd Marines Charlie Company 2nd Combat Engineer Battalion 2nd Force Reconnaissance Company Fleet Marine Force Atlantic Charlie Company 4th Reconnaissance Battalion Marine Forces Reserve Marine Aircraft Group 29 HMM 162 HMLA 269 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit Battalion Landing Team 2 over 1 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit Battalion Landing Team 2 Halves Elements of 507th Maintenance Company Elements of 183rd Maintenance Company G Parachute Battery 7th Parachute Regiment Royal Horse Artillery 3rd Marine Aircraft Wing Marine Wing Support Squadron 371 3rd Low Altitude Air Defense Battalion Ba'athist Iraqi Forces Iraqi Army 11th Division 23rd Brigade 45th Brigade 47th Brigade 21st Tank Regiment Unidentified Commando Battalion Fedayeen Saddam Paramilitary Forces 
Al-Quds Army. In popular culture, the Battle of Nasiriya is featured in the 2008 HBO miniseries Generation Kill. In Episode 2, The Cradle of Civilization, the ambush of the 507th Maintenance Company was recreated at the beginning of the 2003 NBC television film Saving Jessica Lynch. The ongoing Battle of Nasiriya is the backdrop for the rest of the events of the film. Much of playwright and Iraq War veteran Sean Huzz's play The Sandstorm draws on his experiences and those of his comrades during and immediately following their unit's involvement in the Battle of Nasiriya. Bibliography The Battle of Nasiriya Marine Corps Gazette 87 40 42 44 46 September 2003, 411,172,841, retrieved 6 January 2009, Dunphy, David R., Ambush Alley Revisited, Marine Corps Gazette 88, 44-46, 583,358,751, retrieved 6 January 2009, Lowry, Richard S. Marines in the Garden of Eden. The Battle for Anasariah. Barclay Hardcover. ISBN 0-425-209881. Livingston, Gary. Anasariah. The Fight for the Bridges. Kesson Press. ISBN 1-928724-04-3. Pritchard, Tim. Amber Shalley. The Most Extraordinary Battle of the Iraq War. Presidio Press. ISBN 0-89141-911-X.